So the Phoenix Suns just beat the Bucks in game one of the NBA Finals with probably as good a performance as they could have hoped for. Uh, Chris Paul played very well. He had 32 points, 9 assists. Booker added 27 points and got to the free throw line quite a bit. And DeAndre Ayton with 22 points and 19 rebounds, always in the right spot, playing his role perfectly. So yeah, they got production from their three stars, but also got production from role players. Cam Johnson, 10 points. Campaign, 10 points. And Mikel Bridges, 14 points. And, you know, that plus pretty good defense throughout the game. And just a lot of attacking the Bucks in the, with the pick and roll was the recipe for success tonight. And for the Bucks, this loss, you know, I thought it could have been worse for the Bucks. And all things considered, you know, the Suns were better rested. The Suns had home court advantage. They can probably say all those things. But I think there was a fundament, fundamental issue uh, with them and how they guard the pick and roll and how they're going to guard the pick and roll for the rest of this series that I think needs to be solved. <coughs> solved. My bad. So, uh, yes, they started with P.J. Tucker on Chris Paul. And they were also switching at almost everything. And that meant a lot of Lopez on Chris Paul and a lot of P.J. Tucker on DeAndre Ayton. And through the first quarter, I thought they were surviving. Uh, Chris Paul wasn't being too aggressive. He was looking to pass. The Suns weren't shooting too well from three. And though Ayton was getting offensive rebounds and lobs, you know, it wasn't killing the Bucks. Uh, but then um, it started to get a bit, a bit better for the Suns. Uh, whether it be Chris Paul being more aggressive, I'd say was the biggest thing. He didn't have a point in the first quarter, but had 11 in the second. And yeah, once uh, that st started happening, once Chris Paul was started being more aggressive, and Booker, Booker was sort of at a good level throughout. Um, wasn't super efficient, but getting to the free throw line, I thought the refs were on the sun side, to be honest. They were giving... Uh, Devin Booker, a lot of whistles, which, you know, were a bit questionable and wouldn't call a thing on Chris Middleton. So, um, but yeah, even without that, I think the Suns would have won. But yeah, uh, my point is uh, Booker was good throughout the game and uh, did well to get to the free throw line. Um, in the first, uh, in the first half, primarily, the Bucks were throwing it into the post, throwing it to Brook Lopez in the post a little bit. A few times it was just in transition. He'd get a seal on Jay Crowder or something, and they'd throw it to him, and he'd do a little hook shot. And that was working offensively, but defensively, Brook Lopez was just getting torched. And he had 17 points in 23 minutes, but that offensive pr production was not enough uh, to sustain how bad he was defensively and overall. Um, it just wasn't worth having Brook Lopez out there. Uh, but then when the Bucks took out Brook Lopez, which is sort of what I'm getting to, um, it wasn't much better because Chris Paul would then just go at Bobby Portis. And then when they took both of them out and they had the Giannis, Tucker, Connaughton, Drew Middleton, or it might have been Forbes instead of uh, one of those guys, it wasn't working either because they were getting killed on the glass by a and Chris Paul was still hitting tough mid-rangers. So that issue is sort of going to be there for the Bucks all series and I don't really know the solution maybe you just live with some of the offensive rebounds and say we're just going to play tight on Chris Ball hope you get a more favorable whistle um maybe you know it, it's just tough because Chris Ball is so so good at that that's what he's making a career out of he's so so good at either getting to a spot in the mid-range or getting the big man usually Brooke Lopez switched on to him so it's going to be tough for the Suns to for the Bucks to solve that. Um, so we'll see what they do. Obviously, Mike Budenhoser is smarter than me. But yeah, I'm sort of um, not sure what the solution is. Maybe they just, you know, obviously the solution is multiple solutions, trying different things, giving uh, Paul different looks. Maybe it's a zone, but then again, mid-range does defeat a zone. Um, maybe they try and double a bit more, try and get in and out of his hands and make guys like Crowder make plays. But then again, the Suns, they just play no bad players. And they could bring in Cam Johnson to get more playmaking. Um, I mean, Cameron Payne to get more playmaking. So, 
I think the Suns certainly have the matchup advantage right now in the chess game. Um, if I talk about some positives for the Bucks, because it wasn't all bad, Giannis, I thought, looked pretty good in terms of athleticism and help, health. He played 35 minutes, had 20 points, 17 rebounds. Obviously not his best, best game, but at least he was out there. Um, and I thought Middleton was good. Had 29 points, hit a few threes, sort of brought the Bucks back in there um, with the shooting, but they couldn't really complete the comeback. It was sort of the game where they get it back to, to like, I think seven was the biggest they got it down to. But then Chris Ball, like, hit a three. Um, maybe, like, they have, like, places to improve, which is always nice offensively. I would say Drew Holiday having 10 points, you can definitely do a lot better than that. And then maybe you get more than five points from Portis. Um, maybe you just don't play Jeff Teague because he played 10 minutes for some reason, which, you know, just shouldn't be happening in a finals game. Uh, yeah, I would say they also shot pretty well, which, you know, the Bucks did from three, which, like, you could go either way with that. You could say at least their three-pointers are falling, but you could say uh, you shot 44% from three and you still didn't win. So, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, whatever you make of that uh but yeah a good win for the suns a few more things the free throws the suns for 25 for 26 from for the line from the line which you know yeah they they got to the line a lot and they're a very very good free throw shooting team and that certainly gave them an advantage in this game um yeah so for the rest of the series i think yeah the suns have the advantage but Obviously, not nearly over yet. I think the Bucks have some adjustments to make. Um, and they just have, uh, maybe offensively, I like that they are using Giannis as a screener and a roller, but Giannis does this thing where he, when he sets a screen or when he gives a handoff, he slips it or doesn't make contact with the uh, player defending the Bucks ball handler. And it sort of makes it easier to defend for the Sun. So uh, we'll see what they do. If I think of some other things, uh, Dario Sarge did go down for the Suns, which is bad for them. So when it's Kaminsky at center or just not Aiton out there, I think maybe they need to win those minutes quite well. Um, and then obviously there, there's just taking Teague out of the rotation. Uh, that's 10 minutes you can give to Drew and Giannis and Tucker. Um, you know, taking down... I actually think Forbes gave them a little bit of juice. Uh, whether it be him hitting threes in transition or getting around uh, getting around screens and shooting threes or being uh, a member of a two-man game with Giannis with him handing it off to Forbes. So maybe it's playing Forbes a little bit more and staggering him with whatever Suns player you can hide him on, whether it's Torrey Craig or someone like that. Um, see if he can give you more juice offensively. Uh, yeah. But I think this, the biggest issue is still the pick and roll coverage for the Bucks. So we'll see what happens. The Suns win game one. And, you know, if, if you're a Suns fan, you're probably feeling pretty good right now. But anyways, thanks for watching this video, guys. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.